Come on, everybody, put those hands together. Into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We join together in singing, oh, how I love this place. The day is the day of salvation, miraculous turn of rounds. The kingdom of God is amongst us, oh, how I love your house. I just love, I love the house of the Lord, yeah, I just I love, just love. I, love. I love the house of the Lord, yeah, yeah, hey, come on, hey, hey, come on, hey, Name. It is done by our Father in heaven. My God, how I love this place. My God, how I love this place. I just love. I love the house of the Lord. I just love. is doing oh, what a privilege. it's a privilege isn't it thank you, Jesus. we're thankful we're grateful Jesus. come on let's participate in it to be a part of this. what a privilege, oh, what a privilege. come on I, I just love I love the house of the Lord how about you I, love the house of the Lord. I just love I could tell you, which I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There are not enough colors to paint the whole picture, not enough words to ever say what I found. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy, He is a merciful and powerful. We declare the glory, give Him all the honor, all together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my King. There's no one before You. Yes, we will adore You. All of this is for You. Who we talking about? That's my King. Jesus in my King. I'm not letting the rocks cry without joining the chorus. There are not enough notes to make the harmony. It's the song of the angels. Angels. Through all of the ages. Ages. With all of the 
all of the earth and help us live on Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful and powerful Who are we talking about? That's my King We declare the glory Give Him all the honor All together worthy Who are we talking about? That's my King There's no one before you Yes, we will adore you All of this is for you Who are we talking about? That's my king. Is he your king today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd. My protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my anchor. If you knew me then, you'd believe me now. It turned my whole life upside down. It took the old and he made, he made it new. That's what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome His goodness and mercy, the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. His goodness and mercy, the power of the blood. Power of the blood, yeah, yes. I thought I deserved, I don't know about you, to be six feet beneath the earth. For all the things I've done, the things I've said, the choices made that I regret but for the mercy of God I would still be lost I'm alive I'm alive to tell the story to tell the story I've overcome it was his 
forgiveness and mercy, the power, the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's goodness and mercy, the power of the, power of the blood. It's power in the blood. Anybody grateful for the blood? was a sacrifice. Did he really do that for me? Was the cross meant for me? Let my Savior carry me. Savior carry now, me. now I've been made been free. Made free by the Nothing mercy of the God. Mercy of God could have was the grave meant for me? Where my Where sin my lay there. But now I stand with him. Was it meant for me that my Savior came? Oh, I've been made free by the mercy of God. Was the grave meant for me? Find it in the blood. Say power in the blood. 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 To redeem. Power in the blood. To heal your body. Power in the blood. Of every disease. Power in the blood. question for you. What can wash away my sin? Come on. That's it. What can make 
me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus come on let's say it again what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus If this is your first time at Bonita Valley, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. If you want some info on BVCC, simply complete our online connect card. Here's how it works. Scan the QR code you'll find in the seat pocket in front of you with the camera on your smartphone. Open the link that will take you to connect card. You'll find a number of connecting options, including first time guests, prayer requests, I want some info on a Bonita Valley ministry. Check the appropriate connection box you're after. Push submit and we'll get back to you ASAP. If you're a first time guest today, please stop by Guest Central at the end of the service and pick up a special gift bag we have just for you. We'd like to take a few moments to tell you about some things coming up for you and your family at Bonita Valley. Summer has arrived, and we want to keep you updated on what's happening between Sundays during the month of June. Some of our ministries will be going on summer break, but we'll be back in August. Those ministries include Moms Connected, Divorce Care, Wednesday Night Ministries like Benita Valley Youth, Benita Rangers, and Benita Girls Club, and our Wednesday evening service. Our Thursday ministries, including BVCC men and women, will also be on summer break. What ministries are happening in June? Glad you asked. Our active ministries include our faith and fitness opportunities like Dance Fit, Crossbox, and Boot Camp. On Tuesdays, there's Prime Timers in the morning, and on Tuesday evenings, we have care ministries like Celebrate Recovery and Grief Share. To stay up to date on what's happening this summer, stop by the calendar tab online at BeatedValley.com. Calling all 7th through 12th graders. Friday, June 21st from 6 to 8.15 p.m., Benita Valley Youth is going to Sky Zone. We're asking that all students be dropped off at Sky Zone in Eastlake. Our jump time is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Then we will all be walking over to Lolita's. The cost to jump is $29. Please make sure to send your student with money if they wish to order from Lolita's. To register, head over to the Bonita Valley website and click on the Events tab. We'll see you there. If you're a 30 or 40-something, you're invited to a night of bowling happening Sunday, June 23rd at 6.45 p.m. at Bolero. The cost for unlimited games and shoes is $23. To register for this fun night out, just stop by the events tab at BenitaValley.com. Celebrate Recovery is a ministry that's helped thousands experience breakthrough from addictions. CR is a 12-step, biblically-based program built on eight principles that can help us heal from our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups. It's really a ministry for anyone who desires to experience greater freedom in any area of our life. Celebrate Recovery meets every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. in the Family Center. We believe God has entrusted us to be managers of our time, talent, and treasures. We believe he wants us to use temporary resources to make a real and eternal difference in our world. And that's what giving at BBCC is all about. 
When we give to God, we see lives change and transform, both others and ours. There are three ways to give at BBCC. Online at bonitavalley.com slash giving, by texting Bonita Valley to 833-303-9325, or by mailing your offering to BBCC 4744 Bonita Road, Bonita, California, 91902. During our Sunday services, we offer a professionally staffed nursery that will lovingly care for your little one up to two years of age. We also offer an outdoor patio area and a family room with TV monitors for parents who choose to keep children under four years of age with them. Pastor Davida and her team lead incredibly fun ministries for preschool and elementary age children in the Life Center gym. During today's service, you can take notes, sign up for events, and even give using your smartphone. Simply use the follow the service QR code located in the seat pocket in front of you. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. Now, at some point in your life, maybe still, you look forward to summer. I still look forward to the summer. Anybody with me? And if you look forward to summer, you look forward to the signs of summer. Signs of summer include school, being out. When I was a child, you didn't graduate from sixth grade. You were out of sixth grade, like you were out of prison. <laughs> but now they graduate, we were out. Pools are open, the beach is full, Disneyland, I am coming because summer is here. Matthew 24, 32, Jesus says, now learn this lesson from the tree, from the fig tree, as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, the signs, you know that what is near, summer is Near. Now, summer is here, but the question I have for you today is, do you have summer in your soul? And what do I mean by that? That just because summer is here does not mean that we know how to rest. If you're taking notes, that's number one. Just because summer is here does not, does not mean we know how to rest. Studies indicate that we Americans are are tired. We don't sleep as well as we used to sleep. Americans tend to be sleep deprived. We are sleeping two hours less per night than we did 60 years ago. And we aren't so good at resting and relaxing either. One study tells us in the Gallup poll that only 26% of Americans say that they get at least eight hours of sleep a night. 57% of Americans say they would feel better if they got more sleep. In 2013, when Americans were asked, it was just about reversed. 56% saying they got the sleep they needed, 43% saying they did not. And in 1942, the vast majority of Americans were sleeping more. Some 59% said they had eight hours or more, while 33% said they slept six to seven. A lack of sleep can take toll on our health. Why are we exhausted? Because we were not built to live the way that we are living. The Bible puts it this way in Job 10, 18. It says, they are unable to relax and enjoy anything they have worked for. We were not built to have our offices in our pockets following us around with emails and text messages all day long. We were not built for social media and screens to be in our faces 24-7. And the earlier kids get smartphones, the worse their mental health gets as adults. 
A new study shows that 27,000 people show that owning a smartphone at a younger age predicted lower self-worth, lower motivation, lower resilience, more sadness and anxiety and aggression, especially for girls. We were not built to live the way that we are living. So if you're tired, if you're worn out, I have good news. Summer is here. And not just the summer season, but a summer for your soul. Because number two in your notes is this. God invites us to step into his rest. If you're going to experience summer in your soul, you need to know that God has an ongoing invitation for you to step into his rest. Hebrews 4.1 and then 11 says this, God's promise of enjoying. Say enjoying. Does God have things for you to enjoy? Absolutely. God's promise of enjoying his rest still stands. So be careful that none of you fails to receive it. It's not automatic. Verse 11. So let us make every what? Every effort to enjoy that rest. Rest and enjoying God's rest sometimes can take a fight from us. Can require fight from us. God's rest requires real life decisions and real life adjustments, or we will not experience it. I got two decisions for us to make today to experience that rest. Decision number one is this I'm not going to drift. If you're going to experience summer in your soul, you got to decide you're not going to drift from what matters most in your life. Psalm 119.10 says this, I wholeheartedly searched for you. Do not let me do what? Wander or drift away from your commandments. Some of you are having one of the best years of your life spiritually. Some of you are growing phenomenally spiritually. And you've used your whole heart to get close to God. And your prayer now is, God, don't let me wander. Don't let me drift. And drift from what? Psalm 16, 11. You make known the path of, you make the path of life known to me. When we're walking with God, we know his path. Next sentence, complete joy is in your presence. When I don't drift, I'm in God's presence. I'm experiencing a a fuller cup of joy. Last sentence, pleasures are by your side or your right hand forever. God has goodness for us, enjoyment for us, joy for us, life and a path and direction. And it requires us deciding, I'm not going to wander. I'm not going to drift. Because drifting is natural. It doesn't take any energy or any goals or any purpose. We just do it on our own. And especially when we're missing a structure we are used to. When I drift, I lose. I lose momentum, I lose progress, I lose what I have fought for. Spiritually, I lose my path, I lose his presence, I lose joy over my life. Drifting is natural, but when I drift, I lose. I gotta decide I'm not drifting this summer. Number two, decision number two for us. I'm going to build new structures where I have space. I'm going to build new structures while I have new space. I'm going to build summer structures for spiritual success. Earl McManus, author of a book called Mind Shift. If you need a book this summer, Mind Shift's a good book. Shares this core thought that much of my life depends on whether I'm structured for failure or structured for success. Spiritual Growth and success can often be the result of good structure. 
Here's the decision we are making. I'm going to build for myself a summer structure around God's path, his presence, and his joy. A prescription for an amazing summer. And in the Old Testament, after God had used Moses to deliver Israel from slavery in Egypt, God prescribed a structure for their week. What does he say in Exodus 20? God says, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Do all your work in six days. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to do what? To honor the Lord your God. So what are we doing? It's actually not what we're doing. It's what we're not doing. Do not do any work. Somebody say yay. God's giving you a day off. And on, don't do any work on that day. The same command applies to your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your animals. Your little pet cat needs a day off from, from you. Fido needs some time away from you. It also applies to outsiders who live in your towns. In the six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, everything in them. But he did what? If a Christian ever tells you God never takes a day off, tell them, have you read the Bible lately? He rested on the seventh day. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. What does holy mean? It means it's his. He's claimed it. If you're a follower of Jesus, God has claimed your seventh day. He says, I own it. And as the owner of your seventh day, he says, I don't want you working. What does that mean? Whatever you do for work for six days, you're not doing that on day seven. So figure it out. Whatever you do for six days that stresses you out and drains you and depletes you, if you're walking into obedience, you go, I'm not doing that on, on the seventh day of the week. Now, what day of the week is that? It could be any day. For me, it's tomorrow. For you, it's today. It could be any day, but we stop doing the things that are working us. We're not earning anything. We are resting from earning. We're resting from working. And you need it. The Sabbath is in God's top ten. If we keep don't lie and don't steal seriously, why don't we keep the Sabbath day holy seriously? Because the core truth we need to know is this, number three in your notes. A weekly rhythm of rest is the best medicine for a depleted soul. You and I are finite beings. We run out of anything and everything. We have got to get replenished. And you replenish by, by unplugging from normal six-day-a-week work. Some Christians may say, hey, that was for them. I don't need a break. God doesn't sleep. The devil never takes a break. What a spiritual Christian who says that. You should say this in, in response. Maybe if the devil took a break, he wouldn't be so mean. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Hebrews 4, 9. So there is still a Sabbath. There is still a Sabbath day rest for who? And who are you? God's people. Verse 10. God rested from his work. What does this mean? It means he's modeled it for us. Those who enjoy God's rest also rest from their works. God wants you to experience summer in your soul, at a soul level. So people think God doesn't want them to have any fun. This is not a God who does not want you to have fun. This is a God who wants you replenished and full and, and, and ready for everything. What does Jesus say? Mark 2, 27. Then he added, Jesus said, the day of rest a holy day was made for people, 
not people for the day of rest. The Sabbath day is like a, it's like a set of clothes God's made for you to wear one day a week to, to, to recharge because we all run out of batteries. Now, I love my family. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to embarrass anybody in my family. But sometimes when my sister sends me a screenshot of her phone, her batteries blow 20%. Her phone is always tired. I feel so bad for her phone. It's always almost dead. And again, I don't want to name names, but when I get in my mom's car, it's always on empty. Her car is always tired. We run out of batteries. We run on empty too much and too often. The Sabbath is about recharging all of you. The Ten Commandments does not include the commandment to sleep eight hours a day because if all you needed was sleep, it would be in the commandments. But the Sabbath is about recharging all of you because you are a multidimensional being. Your mind gets tired. Your emotions get tired. Your will gets tired. Your soul, the unseen part that holds it all together, gets tired. What does Paul say? Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. Say it again. Let us not grow weary tired or become discouraged doing good. Why? For the proper time we will reap. Meaning everything we've worked for will come to fruition. Period or comma? Comma. If we do not give in or give up. You've been working your whole life. If you want to reap at the end, if you want to reap a harvest in, in heaven, it requires not giving up. What does that mean? It means this in your notes. Tiredness and discouragement are two of your greatest enemies. Say that out loud. Tiredness and discouragement are two of my greatest enemies. And God knows it, and we don't. If we want to reap a harvest, if we want the most fruitful life, tiredness and discouragement must be fought against with what? With God's rest. When we're tired, we don't see straight. When we're discouraged, we don't think right. We, don't, we make bad decisions. We say things we should not say when we're tired and discouraged. Who's done that in this room? We quit things we should not quit. We compromise who we are, what we're supposed to be when we're tired and we're discouraged. The devil has a plan for your life. It's to get you tired and discouraged. The devil has a plan for your life. And God has a Sabbath for your life. Why does God want us learning how to enter his rest? It's this. When we are plugged into God's rest, we will be fruitful. We will finish well. He wants us fruitful, productive, spiritually and otherwise. He wants us connected to him. He wants us to finish well. He wants us rested. Why? Because he loves us. Do you enjoy seeing someone you love depleted and exhausted? God doesn't either. When we're plugged into God's rest, we're fruitful and we finish well. Number four in your notes. To experience summer in my soul, wrong beliefs have to be replaced. Sometimes we believe the wrong things and it keeps us from resting. 
We can misquote, misunderstand scripture and damage ourselves in the process. You heard a Christian say, God says he'll never give us more than we can handle, so you keep on going, Susie. Just pray, just have faith. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 talks about temptation and God giving us a way out. It doesn't say he won't give us more than we can handle. He will give us more than we can handle so we can know that we can't do it without him. He'll allow us to deal with more than we can deal with so that we turn to him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amazingly encouraging verse. Does it mean you can go 24, 7, 7 days a week and not sleep? No. You will crash. A prophet named Elijah experienced a crash. A crash so bad, he told God he didn't want to live anymore. He's a man of God. He's a prophet. He's doing awesome stuff. You can read about it yourself. What happens when he crashes? 1 Corinthians 19, sorry, 1 Corinthians, 1 Kings 19.4. I have had enough, Lord. Have you ever said that to anybody? I have had enough. Elijah had a southern accent. That's what I think. (laughs) I have had enough, Lord, he prayed. Let me die. I am no better than my ancestors. This is how Elijah talked. (laughs) Then he lay down under a tree and he slept. Suddenly an angel came to him and touched him. Get up and eat, the angel said. Elijah saw near his head a loaf baked over coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank. And then he went back to sleep. Verse 7. Later the Lord's angel, later. So the angel lets Elijah sleep. Later the Lord's angel came to him a second time. The angel touched him, said, get up and eat. If you don't, The journey will be too hard for you. What did God do for Elijah when he crashed? God gave Elijah a nap and a snack. (laughs) Sometimes we just need a nap and a snack. Medical News Today article says the analysis revealed that people who nap one to two times a week were 40% less likely to have cardiovascular problems such as heart attack, stroke, or heart failure. After an average of five years follow-up, those who did not nap, those who did not nap at all, the benefits were no longer visible for those who napped six to seven times a week, and the duration of the nap did not seem to make a difference Sub point, if you want to live longer, take a nap. How many parents in here have ever had a toddler in your life? Have you ever had an upset toddler? Because Susie took his toy again. And he's crying and he's upset. And he hasn't had something today. And then you, the parent, says to to your little kid, you say what? It's time for a nap. And And then you go live your life. And your boss takes your toy. Your coworker takes your toy. And you're now super upset. You're all mad. You're like really mad. And you don't go look in the mirror and say, buddy, you need, you need a nap <laughs> and a snack. The Bible tells us that God invites us to enjoy his rest. Jesus says to his followers, I am the bread of life. Enter my rest. Eat of my body. Because you need a nap and you need a snack. When it comes to wrong beliefs, shift number one, I am no longer comparing myself to others. I am free to do life different from what I've seen. 
different from your friends, different from your hero on the gram, your Instagram person that you copy, different than, than what your parents or your mother did or said or your father did or said. Exodus 33, 15, then Moses said to him, you must go with us. How else will we be different from all the other people on the face of the earth? If you're a Christian, your main goal is not to be the same as your neighbor. You are to be different than your neighbor. Romans 12, 2, Paul says, don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Be different. Be, be weird. Have a different kind of schedule. We copy ungodly people way too much. We look and we act and we talk like non-Christians way too much, and then we serve literally no purpose in our world. We're just like our world. Be different. In part, you're going to rest differently when you're a believer. Shift number two, I am no longer working to earn the right to rest. In Jesus, I'm working from a place of rest. That's a huge shift. Do you feel guilty when you take a day off? Do you feel guilty on vacation? Do you feel guilty when you pay for vacation? You don't earn the right to rest in Jesus anymore. You are working from a place to rest. You have a right through Jesus to rest. He's invited you. It's given to you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We know the scripture going to use a bit of different translation. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are tired and have heavy loads, heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Accept my work. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in spirit. And you will find rest for your souls. People say on the cellular level. You need it on the soul level. Rest on the soul level. The work that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you to carry is not heavy. In Jesus, I'm working from a place of rest. Meeting with Jesus becomes my Sabbath. As I unplug from the world and stresses and work, you don't, you need to fire the voices in your head that make you feel guilty for resting. They are ungodly. They are not of God. They're not from God. They're not from Jesus. They're from the devil. Here's another wrong belief. I can't afford time to really rest one day a week. If you're tired and exhausted, you can't afford not to. Maybe if we stop believing the Sabbath is a luxury, we can start walking in it like it's a necessity that it actually is. The average fast food restaurant is open seven days a week and makes about a million dollars a year. Chick-fil-A is open six days a week and a store on average makes five million dollars a year. Don't be Taco Bell when God is calling you to be Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I really felt the power when I said that. <laughs> Number five, summer in my soul means doing something new. Doing something new. Isaiah 43, 16 in the 18 and 19 this is what the Lord says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Don't be obsessed with the past. Verse 19, see I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 
I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in your wasteland. Summer means embracing and doing new or renewing things. What does this include? This includes experiencing new places. When's the last time you've been to the beach? When's the last time you went to your pool? When's the last time you went to the mountains or even the park? So many things around us. There are people who pay thousands of dollars to get on an airplane, to get a hotel, to book a rental car, just to experience what we pay thousands of dollars in taxes in the state of California to enjoy. You've already paid for it. We paid for it through these stupid taxes. So it's basically free at this point. So many studies show the benefits of getting out of your house, in the sun, around trees, around nature, getting your feet literally in sand, your feet in grass can have an effect on your body. Just looking at a body of water is good for you. An article says, the best place to relax is near water. After just two minutes of viewing water outdoors, blood pressure, heart rate drop, it's more calming to look at a lake, pool, or stream than trees or grass. Beaches are popular for a reason. Wider bodies of water bring more tranquility. Tranquilo, baby. Less than two minutes of looking at it is enough to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, what is the parasympathetic nervous system? Listen, doctors and smart people like myself know, and I don't have time to explain to you what it means, but it chills out. That's what you need to know. Moving on. (laughs) Some of you have a pool. Some of you have not asked a pastor to bless your pool, and it shows. <laughs> and I'm available as long as it's near bathtub temperature because I have to get in it to bless it. But you should use your pool. Get away from home, get around nature, get around trees and water, new places. <laughs> Next, experience new activities. Rest does not, does not mean we do nothing automatically. We can do nothing. Nothing can be quite awesome if you're good at it. I'm good at it. Rest can also mean doing things, using different life muscles, different parts of our brain. Sports does that. A new activity for some of us is sleep and a nap. We've not gotten one in a while. A new Bible study, a new book, a new podcast, a new sport. Everybody's playing pickleball right now. A new hobby, a new skill. Pastor Dan, our youth pastor, is learning guitar right now. New experiences keep our mind flexible and fresh and young. Do new activities this summer. Next, experience a new spiritual rhythm. New seasons, new schedules, breaks are a new opportunity for a new thing. Some of you are, are, are so encouraging because you, every week, you're part of a midweek ministry. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday service, men's and women Bible study, and they go on break. And we don't just break, you can replace what's on break. Here's an idea. What if we took something we learned from church and applied it outside of church? What if on Wednesday or Thursday you invite a friend to coffee and talk and pray and getting God's word together. As followers of Jesus, we're no longer working to earn the right to rest. We are working from a place of rest. And that place is in Jesus. I wanna ask you to, to, to stand to your feet for a moment. Jesus is our place of rest. And if you're tired, if you're worn out, If you feel like you're going in circles, not moving forward, you have a savior who wants to introduce you to rhythms of rest and a summer for your soul. I want us to bow our heads just for a moment. 
ultimate rest is in the presence of Jesus. When we let go of baggage and weight and sins and mistakes. Because in exchange for all that stuff, he gives us grace and forgiveness. And what I want to ask you to do right now, as pastor and prayer partners come, in the, in the privacy of your heart, whatever's weighing on you, just right now, just whisper to God, what's weighing on you? What's stressing you out? What keeps you up at night? What's stealing your joy? What's keeping you angry? What's keeping you frustrated? So right now, just whisper to God, God, I'm, I'm releasing these things to you. I'm releasing my regrets to you. I'm releasing sinful habits to you. Things that steal wrong beliefs, things that steal my rest and my joy. And here's what I wanna, wanna ask you to do. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, I wanna ask you to pray a prayer with me right now. You can say this, say, Heavenly Father, with the faith that I have, I receive Jesus. I receive a new life. I receive new rest. I wanna know you. I wanna walk with you. I thank you for all of your forgiveness. And I choose to walk with you as my guide from this day forward. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen.